people are have, have got their bags full. And even though there's so much uh, control mechanisms have been put in place to prevent any kind of rebellion, any kind of protest, people are out there anyway. Hundreds, thousands of people in our circles of, let's say, spiritually oriented people, new age people, uh, we used to be two, ten, five, twenty, fifty, now we're hundreds, five hundreds, I'm talking to thousands of people now, and uh, people are getting clear. The old has to go. It's a kind of global feng shui. It doesn't work. The age of reason is over. And uh, so go the priests, so go the kings, so go the masters who have, I don't mean ascended masters or teaching masters, I mean the dominating masters who believe that they own this planet and they're in for a big surprise. And as, as hard as they try to keep that wall from crumbling with the old finger in the dike syndrome, the rush of humanity, of spirit, the human spirit is pouring through. And it's a very exciting thing to be part of. Absolutely. Um, why are the Syrians so invested in our evolutionary process? What connection do, do they have to us on Earth? Okay, this is kind of a big question, and I can answer it if you've got yeah. the time, as they say, I've got the beer. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, my books talk about the great experiment that was conducted, by, head up by the Syrians. It was called the Great Experiment. This great experiment involved creating a race, or a, let's say a race, of beings that could be light beings in body, walking light beings who would be able to be the guardians of the entire three-dimensional plane. And that was what Homo sapiens was intended to be. Okay, it's a little bit big as the concept goes. They involved ascended masters from many uh, dimensions. They involved the Pleiadians. And even extraterrestrial societies were involved in that plan. Now, for the people that are religiously oriented, I get resistance to this. Like, are you saying that we are not children of God? And that's foolish because any light beings that were working for a light end uh, are all just in the greater sphere of creation. So we can let go of that concern and just imagine that beings of a very intense light orientation had the goal to be able to create such beings. This is why the concept of being 12 stranded light beings comes into play. We were designed with 12 strands of light of DNA. Um, another long story how that evolved into two, but uh, which is again discussed at length in the works that I brought through. But why are they concerned in, in our unfolding? Because they were sort of involved with our creation. And as odd as that might sound to people, I like to remind people that, you know, we're little gods in our own world doing the same kinds of things in laboratories to animals. The difference is the focus is not to create light. It's not. It's to create more food sources, it's to create vaccines, it's to create things that are not of that higher intention in my, so far in my experience. But uh, we do it. We, we, once you get the genetic code, you can play. And the question is, are you creating to, to create an intense vibration of light, or are you creating to serve another purpose? So why is it then that humanity has ended up um, not being uh, able to use those 12 strands? Um, have we been deliberately suppressed, and you know, how has this been done? Oh, boy, you do ask great questions. <laughs> um, there was intervention in this process because so many hundreds of thousands of years ago, the famous planet Nibiru was ejected out of, okay, I love it. here we go, <laughs> you've asked, <laughs> now we're going to go. According to the Sirians, which is a three-star system, yeah. Sirius A is in the third dimension. Sirius B, many hundreds of thousands, millions of years ago, passed into the sixth dimension, and this is Sophis, this is the group that I'm connected with. Sirius C, um, got pro projected into the fourth dimension. In orbit around this star, Sirius C, which sometimes people think Sirius is planet. Sirius is, the Sirian system is stars with planets around them. 
Okay, so that third star, which the Syrians call Anu, you're starting to see that Egyptian influence there. Uh, one of the planets that, all, uh, re, that um, God, I'm not finding the word, orbited, there you go, around Anu was Nebiru. And as Anu went in through the process of going through its own astral cords, that's what happens. Planets, stars, everything uh, can pass through its own astral cords, just like we do, and pop out of the third dimension and move higher. So the star itself, conscious being, moved through its own astral cords, which our physicists think are black holes. They're, they're astral cords. Very interesting. Yeah. And it, I, I've got to interject here that even the scientist Michio Kaku, who I've had the pleasure of having on, on my radio show, uh, was talking about the umbilical cord of the Earth. I said, oh, Dr. 